This video contains gratuitous use of profanity and uncomfortable pauses to compensate for lack of professionalism and original thought. Viewer discretion advised. Special guest star Big Rob joins us this week as we present our 2021 Excelsior Awards. Coming to you live from the unfinished Death Star, we bring you the Nerdy Man Room with your host, Hassel and Monster. And this week we have a special guest host. Big Rob is back with us to be our impartial third party on our first annual Excelsior Awards. Now, I'm sure you're asking what the hell is an Excelsior Award. These will be the best in class of the 2021 year. We will do these every year. This is our first one. And we chose Excelsior Award after the iconic, irreplaceable Stan Lee. I mean, he is the father of the modern day superhero. So who better to model, model the best in class after? We will also have a worst in class, which will be the DS award. And I'm sure our regular listeners know what DS will stand for because it's the drizzling shits. So with that being said, we're going to have a little different format this week. We won't have any news this week. We're just going to have, go straight into it. We're going to have the awards. Um, just before we you know, dive head first into this uh, exciting show we have planned for you guys we're going to give a big shout out to our sponsor at the zone kev um he's in tifton uh georgia go there for all your comics and collectible needs uh the zone will hook you up they're top-notch people you can't look for a better place if he don't have it you don't need it so with that being said monster kick us off yeah, and, and while we're before we kick too far into it, while we're on our sponsor, remember you can also find them not only at the store in Tifton, Georgia, but you can find them on Gmail at thezonecollectibles at gmail.com and on Facebook at the Zone Collectibles. Uh, but with that, you know, after greeting our extended family from the Zone as well as from Big Rob back here with us, let's uh, jump straight into these awards because we've got a lot of them to go through. Um, again, these are all completely subjective. They're our ideas. They're what we think. But if you feel, you know, if you have anything you want to share in there, if you feel we missed something or we missed a topic or you just want to expand on one we had or you want to tell us who your choice for a winner would be, feel free to do that in the comments down below. Um, but we're going to kick off with our first category, which is our sports, which does also include sports entertainment or for those of us who grew up with it, wrestling, which is the real name of the, of the sport there. Um, Professional wrestling. Yes. So we'll start off with that. And our first uh, award is for the top wrestling promotion of 2021. Uh, our nominees were AEW, WWE, and Ring of Honor, with our winner coming out to be AEW. And I think we want to, as, as we go through these, we, when we explain the winner, we'll kind of give you our reason for it as well. So I don't get to watch a lot of AEW. I just don't have access to it. But, you know, for me, the reason I supported this as a winner um, was because, you know, they, they've made their mark this year. This was their chance to shine, and, and they've come through. I mean, they... There's still a question they have a niche audience at this point. So are they really going to grow? That's what we'll see in 2022 to see if they can you know, retain the award for a second year in a row. But so far this year, they've, they've really put themselves where they want to be on the map. And, and then I'll let Hassel and Big Rob, you guys can explain because you guys, you guys get to see it more than I do. So you can give more of an in-depth opinion on it. Well, I've watched wrestling since I was knee high to doorknobs. I mean, I've always just, you know, been, been encapsulated by it, but. They just seem to have progressed this year where WWE has progressed. Um, they're getting better each week. The quality of the show, their production value is getting where it needs to be. I mean, they're, they're not WWE, you know, production yet, but I mean, that's something that will come with time. Um, I mean, hell, WCW was open for years and they never got production wise. You know, that's a standard that the WWE has set that is just bar none. But as far as professional wrestling, their duds out wrestle a lot of the stars in WWE. 
And WWE has just made some really baffling choices this year. That is just really there, there's no there's very few characters you're you know driven to want to sit there and watch it. I mean AEW has the balls to put on an hour long world title match. I mean on network television that is ballsy. It was great, actually. I mean, it was it was something that you couldn't turn away from. It was great. I mean, it was so for me that was you know I I, I commend them and I think that there's even better ahead. So, big Rob, you got something you want to? I no, I I definitely agree with you on the uh, on pretty much everything you said. Um, to me, AEW, uh, I, the reason that I supported them for the win on this, um, it, it's just for the sheer amount of talent that they're laying out. I mean, you're bringing in uh, these new kids uh, like uh, Hangman Page and MGF, MJF, excuse me, and Private Party. Uh, but you're also bringing back the legends. I mean, they brought back freaking Sting. Sting's wrestling again. He jumped and, off the top rope last week in a great match. Yeah, and, and he probably only broke, you know, one of his hips doing that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> They do a but, far better job of uh, showcasing their legacy talent than the legends. They, on WWE. they really do. I mean, and you can tell they uh, they really care about where wrestling came from and where wrestling's going. I went on YouTube a while ago, and they were showing um, the after hours of a show they did in North Carolina the other week, and they brought David Crockett out from Crockett Wrestling. And the talent in the ring, the Nightmare Family, and the audience, man, we're just, I mean, they're on their feet clapping and cheering for this man that was a legacy in the Carolina wrestling. You don't really get that with the WWE at all. Greenboro so, was the and, home of Starcade. That that is, you talk about Starcade. That is, that's country right there. Oh yeah, no kidding. But that's uh, that's that's going to be me for. That's why I, I supported the AEW. Well, while we're on the, the subject of professional wrestling, so we'll move on to our next award and our next Excelsior, the Male Wrestler of the Year. Category of the nominees are Roman Reigns, Hangman Adam Page, and MJF, with the winner being Roman Reigns. There was no way around this. As great as AEW is, they have no one that can just touch the Roman Reigns, he looks like a star. He's a million bucks walking. I mean, a guy he draws. I mean, he's been the WWE champion for over 430 some odd days at this point. I think he just broke Brock Lesnar's record that they, you know, set on him to, you know, break CM Punk's record of long term. So he's a should be the longest reigning champion in the modern era at this point. Uh, man, rightfully so. The man, uh, he's good. He's there. He's, you know, he's not somebody that, you know, takes his ball and goes home. So I mean, for me, he was, it's a no brainer as much as I'm a huge fan of that. Hey man, Adam page. He's, he's not Roman Reigns level yet. Yeah. I, I supported Roman in this category myself. Um, and the reason being, you know, as I said earlier with AEW, they have a, they still have a certain niche audience and they've always, they're always going to have that audience, but even with introductions of newer people and Adam and Adam page taking the title and stuff, you still haven't seen any of them be at the point yet where they have fully moved the needle for the company. I, I would maintain that while WWE's needle has not moved, Roman Reigns has probably kept it where it's at. If they had, if they lost him or he wasn't there, it would be much less than what it is right now. Well, if he's on a show, you'll watch his segment. I mean, yeah. I'll tune into the pay-per-view just to see what match he's in that week. I mean, I don't, I don't watch raw at all anymore. I try occasionally and just it turns my stomach. I will turn on SmackDown occasionally on Friday nights. And if I see something interesting with him and Paul Heyman or, you know, the Usos, I, I, I definitely, you know, I'll sit there and watch it. Big Rob, do you have any uh, input on to, to Roman? No, I mean, I, 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 like you said, I mean, the, the man commands respect when he shows up. I mean, he's, he's not his cousin yet, but, uh, but man, he he can really show in there. I, I think uh, Hangman Page and MJF are two really great talents. Uh, MJF is probably one of the best pure mic guys that I've heard in in years. But you know his in ring talent, he needs a little um, a little more experience, and he can get there. But, but yeah, Roman Reigns. I mean, he 
you know, the bloodline is strong with that cat. So I, I totally go with him. I think yeah. we can all agree that Ro- Roman is the present, MJF and Hangman are the future. Yeah. Well, and, and one of yeah, the things I, I, I think one of the things that I, I failed to mention too is that, you know, Roman for his entire run this entire year has always been against somebody who's headlining, right? Yeah. You, you look back at what MJF and Adam Page have worked with this year, and there's times where they've been stuck in fuse that they really shouldn't have been in, or you know they were played out and they just kept dragging them on and on, or that they could have moved them to someone else. And maybe at that point, if they'd have, if they'd have been in the spotlight of the main event the entire time, I probably could have supported them a little bit more on this on on taking well, the spot. Was presented as a drunk and not like the cool stone cold drunk, like a an old liquor <laughs> drunk like me, and hanging around with the dark order a bunch of nerds ever since you know the past exactly and you know mjf he just he's a hell of a heel but he doesn't even wrestle every week unfortunately which is a shame because he actually has really great ring skills as well and and he lost a large portion of his matches with him with them trying to build him to be a big deal of a heel he he should have won more as much favors as it should have yeah so So i guess i'm gonna which is big rob here yeah, uh, so the next category is going to be the, the female wrestler of the year. And uh, our nominees for this one, uh, we're going to have uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, uh, the great Charlotte Flair, and uh, Becky the Man Lynch. Uh, our winner uh, for this one, and this was my pick too, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. She has, uh, Dr. Baker has just really come a long way. And, and part of my time, one of the best people in the business. Uh, she's great on the microphone. She's in the ring. Um, you know, her lights out match with Thunder Rosa was amazing. And, and she just keeps getting better and better. She talks better every week. And her, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Her uh, in ring skills get better and better. And, uh, and if you need your teeth fixed and you're in South Florida, she's the lady to see there too. I mean that's that's pretty <laughs> impressive to get your. I mean to be able to say that and fix them in the same uh, week. Exactly. There you go. So, but that that's my take on uh, Doctor Baker uh, winning that. She's she's probably by far the best pure female heel we have at the moment, without a doubt. I mean she's and she's getting better each week in the ring as well. She cuts a hell of a promo. She don't mind to get in color. I mean that right that in itself is commendable to me especially for a female wrestler i mean she is not scared and she just she's like she's like mjf she has that natural charisma that makes you hate her right the two of them i hope never try a face turn because it's going to be terrible they may get a ds award for that one <laughs> yeah I, I think i think another point to add in too is you know with all of the controversy and backstage heat that Charlotte has had, it's kind of hard to support her in this position this year. Um, and the same with Becky coming back and then they immediately turned her heel, which was a complete waste of bringing her back. Um, it, it was hard to support either one of them. And again, I don't know as much about AEW or get to watch Britt Baker as much, but I, I couldn't argue enough for the other two over her just because of those two points for each of them. Had Becky remained a face, I mean, she is the hottest thing in pro wrestling. I mean, let's just be yeah. honest. Her, when she when she was the man, she was as hot as Stone Cold. I mean, I, and that, that's just that, and for that to be a, a, a female pro wrestler in that spot, something I twenty years ago I told you would never happen. And this woman, when she's out there with Ronda Rousey, they're you know main event and main at WrestleMania, and when her run that was a amazing run. She returns to a Road Warrior pop at SummerSlam. Wins the title, and then they turn heel the next night, and I was like, "This, this is why AEW won promotion of the year." Looking like that, lazy booking. There you go. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll we'll move to our next category too. Uh, this is actually sports moment of the year, so this is all encompassing across any kind of uh, sports out there. You know, whether it's wrestling or baseball, basketball, football. So we wanted to give a moment to shout out to the sports one of the year. And we've got uh, nominees of Braves winning the World Series, CM Punk returning, 
and Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page in this uh, 60 minute match. And for this one, we chose the winner as Braves winning the World Series. I, I think we could all agree this was probably a long fought battle, a feel good moment for a team that hasn't had it in many years, uh, and for an area that hasn't had it because most of the Atlanta teams that go to a playoff somewhere usually choke as soon as they get there. Or typically um, just good enough to make you believe. Yeah. And this is a team that at the All Star break, when they stole the All Star game from us, thank you, Stacey Abrams, um, we had a 3% chance of winning. 3% chance with the team they had. I mean, they had, they were riddled with injuries. And the general manager gambled on free agency. And it paid off like a son of a gun. And, man, you, as, as, a, as a baseball fan, you can't just, I mean, even if you're not a Braves fan, as a baseball fan, you just can't help but feel great about their story. I mean, it was, it's a hell of a story. And they played a hell of a series. I mean, that, that and, uh Championship series against the uh, the Dodgers before they got to the World Series. I mean, every night, man, it was on the edge of your seat. I mean, it was great. And then the World Series itself was was really good, even though they were against some cheating son of a bitches. We want them to you know, call out the Astros like that, but you know. Cheers! But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great moment for us. Uh, and with that, I think that takes us to our next category of, of awards, which is our movies. Uh, how so? I- why don't you kick us off with this one? First category is right up my alley. Horror movies. And the nominees are Halloween Kills, Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, Don't Breathe 2. And the winner is Michael Myers himself, Halloween Kills. It was amazing, a great movie. I'm, I'm not knocking either of the other two because I, re- I actually enjoyed uh, the, the entire Conjuring series. I know uh, Don't Breathe had a very positive response uh, from a lot of his fans, but uh, Michael was just a juggernaut in this movie. It was it was just a two hour thrill ride. So yeah, I, I again I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but I read the plots of them, and this one was probably to me the most fleshed out of any of them. So, so I. And, and again, you are the horror expert around here, so I, I bow down to your wisdom on this and, and back you fully on supporting Halloween Kills for this one. Uh, Big Rob, I didn't know if you had any input onto this one or not. No, I I, I pretty much, like you, I, I bow to David on this because I don't even read the plots to these. So, you know, uh, whatever Hassel thinks, that that's about right. I, I have to America, uh, you would do respect well his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get carried away there. Uh, all right looks like the the next category is our favorite comic movie of the year and um before i get into that you know i can't believe we forgot to do an adult movie of the year no sorry that's just me My bad. <laughs> you know you know what uh as always bonus time with the you know we, we, well, we i never make problem. it more than about 45 seconds into one anyway so i really don't know how they end up so Threesome, uh, handsome. <laughs> I'm extremely Monster, handsome. He, he feels like he's, he's got some screenwriter in him on this. There you go. Uh, the, the nominees for comic movie of the year, uh, Spider-Man, Man, No Way Home, uh, Shang-Chi, and uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And uh, all, I think, were really good movies, but the, the winner by far and away was Spider-Man, No Way Home. And uh, if you have not gotten a chance to see this, um, go ahead and pause the podcast, go to the theater, watch the movie, and then come back and finish the podcast. This is a great movie. Um, this, to me, probably the best comic book movie I've ever seen. Um, you know, and before I seen this, I would have said, you know, something Captain America, uh, First Avenger, uh, or Spider Man 2. And to me, this is even better. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Are we doing spoilers on this thing yet, or no? I feel like we are basically. You know, it's been out long. The if they haven't seen it by now, they deserve. There's, there's, there's no hiding spoilers from this movie anymore yeah. at this point. No. Okay, good point. All right. Anyway, so yeah, when yeah, this thing was great. Your guys' opinions? Well, you guys know me. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I always have been since you know a small child. I mean, got the man on my arm here. Um, so. 
it, it was just a win all the way around. I mean, uh, you, you, you get some feel good moments, you get some closure with some characters from past movies that show up. Uh, you get some justice done to some characters that didn't quite get justice in previous, uh, you know, installments, so to speak. Uh, it, they, they only, there was only one negative at all. And uh, to me, that was that we didn't just get a full on Sinister Six because that's probably as close as we'll get to getting that group together. However, I mean, if, if that's the only thing we can find a bitch about with this movie, I mean, it is a massive win for the fans. I mean, it's, it's a delight. I've seen it twice already myself. Uh, me and my fiance, fiance went, and then I took my, my daughters back and we watched it. And, you know, well, one of them's 22 and one of them is 14, and, and they were both, you know, captivated the whole time. And even though they're not, you know, quite the nerds we are, they got it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, even the past characters like, oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? They didn't, there wasn't no head scratching like a lot of people I think thought there would be. Yeah, I... I don't know if there's anything more I can add to it other than, you know, we, we've harped on it a good bit over the last couple of episodes we've done, but it was just a fantastically well done movie, which, you know, is a reason for it to win this category. And, you know, as we we've already given away an award for horror movie and comic movie of the year, it only makes sense that both of those were nominees for overall movie of the year. So along with those two of Spider-Man No Way Home and Halloween Kills, our other nominee for our next award of overall movie was Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, but the winner, I don't think should surprise anyone is going to come in as Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, I don't know that there's much more we can really harp on it at this point other than... Just go see the fucking movie. Spoil That's the entire movie, say. so... Go see the movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If that, if that don't tell you how great it is, that's all I can say. <laughs> but that's been Hasn't a, it hit a billion dollars almost now? Yes. Yeah, it's already over a billion. Yeah, you know, three weeks in, we're at a billion dollars. Everybody thinks it's a good movie. <laughs> Yeah. Post COVID, I mean, the, those are those are pre COVID yeah. numbers. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, I yeah. think we even talked about this monster, you know, a few weeks ago on the cast. I, I was personally one that never thought that these kind of numbers would come back. So, hey, kudos. Yeah, now now it'll be interesting to see uh, how how well that's maintained by the next ones that come out. But you know, moving away from movies a little bit, we'll move into our TV categories. Uh, and we call these TV, but this also includes streaming services as well. And I, I think that'll come up with some of these. But Hassel, uh, I think if you want to introduce the next award for us. So for the next award, we have television streaming service show of the year. The nominees are Yellowstone, Cobra Kai, WandaVision. And the winner is Yellowstone. It is an amazing show that shouldn't surprise anyone. If you haven't seen it, you're hiding under a rock. Get out from under that rock. Buy the damn streaming service. Binge them and go. It's John Dutton is probably the closest thing to the modern day cowboy you'll ever see. He's a character that is purely driven by what he feels he's doing the right thing. Now, if that means busting a calf in somebody's ass, he'll do that. But at the same time, it is what he feels is the honorable thing to do. And I mean, there's, there's a good mix of, you know, I mean, they, they pulled no punches on there. They throw the F bombs. There's some sexual content on there. Brief nudity here or there for the guys. Uh, and uh, just a lot of badass kicking ass. And there's a great story behind all of it. And you'll be surprised to know that one of the strongest characters on there is a female. His daughter is like the probably the toughest son he's got. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's great. And I'm sure they're, they're going to be Paramount, more right? than happy to know that they have an Excelsior Award now and they're going to throw their damn Emmys away. They're not studying those anymore. They have a real trophy now. Uh, and Rob, you asked the question, uh, is it on Paramount? I think it's on Peacock, right? Peacock. Yeah, the well, VA. actually, oh, Peacock. you can stream it on Peacock, but uh, if you want to catch the new episodes, it is on Paramount+. Plus. Okay, and I, and I know the uh, prequel show okay. that they've started is also on Paramount+. Plus. Yes, which is 1883, and it's actually really good, too. It will it will probably be in the run next year for an Excelsior. Well, I'm going to figure out where my rock is that I'm hiding under, because I got to admit I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, but but to be honest... Same here, I'm under the same rock. <laughs> but at least for me, I, it, I supported this just because the gravitas of what I've heard from everyone else of it and, and how much 
how much it's out there on everyone else's mind and lips. Um, I haven't seen it. Uh, some of the other shows I was a little more in tune with. Not to say that this one you know, was not my pick by any means. It's just I was, you know, when I looked back at it, I said, okay, these were my picks and this is what I enjoyed. And then I, I looked at that and said, well, there's a whole lot more people talking about that and, and enjoying that than what I was talking about as well. So I had to kind of support Yellowstone for that pick. Yeah, I I haven't gotten a chance to see this either. I was under the rock with uh, with Monster, but uh, but uh, I, I've heard so much good stuff about it, and and I love a good cowboy show, so I'm definitely going to have to try it out uh, at some point very soon. And uh, looks like uh, the next category we've got is going to be for the animated show of the year. Please uh, for this one, and um, this one we've got uh, Castlevania uh, Invincible. Uh, Masters of the Universe Revelations and uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch. And uh, winner on this one uh, from uh, Prime Video, we have Invincible. All right. And uh, I I don't, I can't say a ton about this one because I just watched the first episode um, because these guys talk so highly of this show that I had to give it a shot. And uh, I watched the first episode today. It was really good. Um, Great graphics, um, pretty compelling storyline. It's the same dude that did The Walking Dead, so I mean, you know, he's pretty smart. Um, but uh, you guys can say a lot more about it than I can, so I'll turn it over to y'all on that one. Yeah, um, it, if you've seen the first episode, Big Rob, you, you'll see that it gets better as it goes along. The first one was a little bit slower because it had to lead you in, but just a, I think the only thing I had negative for this show is that sometimes it gets a little more gory than it has to be, and it could cut back a little bit on some of that. But as far as a, just a compelling storyline, it's you know, it's basically like, hey, this is Superman, but Superman's bad, but his kid is not. So, you know, how how you know, how's he going to deal with that? And, and it catches your attention. What an amazing it just draws voice you in. choice. And the voice cast is just great. Yeah, you've got uh, J.K. Simmons as uh, Omni-Man. Um, Invincible is, I uh, can't think of his Clint. name, but he's, yeah. Clint from The Walking Dead, I mean. Yeah, I just can't on. remember his, his actual name. Was it Stephen Yen or something? We don't worry about his real name. He's Clint. <laughs> that's all he's important for is glenn yeah he's just glenn he's a lovable little fella and then uh i, I can't remember uh adam eve the uh one of the female leads in, in there is uh she comes from the show the community and i cannot remember her name saved my life uh big rob you may know her. i know you've seen that show probably more than i have um uh, it's not allison Bree, uh, the other one i mean I, nah, I know who you're talking about but i can't remember her name either man sorry yeah, but but they they fulfill. You get the sense that when they're talking to us, not somebody just doing the voice. It's like okay, that's that actual character, and it's one of those things where I can't see anybody else voicing any of those characters at any point ever again. But Clancy Brown is even on there. He, you know, the Kurgan himself is is one of the the uh, the villain that keeps cloning himself, uh, and he never neither one knows who's the clone or whatnot. Oh, okay, that's why he sounded familiar. Okay, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> that's cool. Awesome. Well, I think with that, we can move into our next uh, overall category as that winds up our TV and streaming services. But uh, video games is our next category. And what we chose for the Excelsior for Game of the Year. So a little uh, note on this one. To be perfectly honest, a lot of these we have not necessarily even got the chance to play short of, I think, Hassel's played a couple of these minimally. So I'm not sure how in-depth he's been with them. But, uh, you know, we, we were looking at this and trying to figure out game of the year. And to be honest, we wanted it to be something that came out this year. And for all three of us, there was very little that came out this year that we were actually currently playing. Some of us older, some of us, you know, just came out. So it's kind of hard to judge it. But uh, we went the nominees of Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Guardians of the Galaxy and Madden 2022 with the winner being Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War. And most of the winner basis for this one is what we hear and see from most of the community out there in the cells as well. Um, I will admit I have never played any of the Call of Duty games. I, I Hassel, I don't think you have either. I've it, done what I call playing on them. Other people <laughs> call me terrible. They called so, you dead. Very fast. Very fast. <laughs> I am El Libre at uh, first person shooters. If I don't see my little character running around, I get shot in the back a whole lot. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, but, I, you can't deny the power of that franchise, period. But in this Call of Duty, uh, this this one was a very high seller. Guardians of the Galaxy, I know, uh, Hassel, you and I both picked up. I haven't got a chance to play it. I know you have. And then 
I think you said you played Madden, Madden, but Rob, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to play any of these this year, but everything I'm playing is from a year or two ago because I'm way behind on getting my stuff actually <laughs> utilized. Well, I'm a big sports, you know, gamer. I mean, I love Madden. I love MLB, the show. Things of this nature. Um, and typically, you know, the WWE games, when we get them, uh, we didn't get one last year, and the one before was a DS award winner. Um so hey hey let me ask you a quick question do you think this year's uh version of wwe 2k or whatever it is is going to be called aew since most of them are over there now it should be called the released (laughs) because they're they're saying 150 (laughs) you know playable characters and they've probably released 50 this year so yeah i'm thinking the released that that would be a good name for it hey if 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 enough people buy the add-ons uh, like if enough people buy the Tony Storm add-on, do you think they'll hire her back? <laughs> I, well, I think what's going to happen is you're going to get an expansion pack as the AEW Arena. <laughs> <laughs> you might get an expansion pack for any new hires or straight out of college. Yeah, it's yeah, that's that's terrible. But they're hiring these kids into college that are never wrestle and running off good talent. Well, and. I, I heard Rob mention Tony Storm, but to, in fairness to her, that that was not their choice to release her. She she chose to be released. She actually paid for her own flight home and said, "Let me out of my contract." <laughs> well, she said it was the worst moving up. I know the well, that was, was just the absolute the first worst thing name. ever. My bad. <laughs> uh, I, I think with that though, uh, we can move to the next award, which uh, Hassel. I think you're presenting that one. Yes, sir. We got the console of the year, PlayStation Five. Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and the winner is a uh, hands downer, PlayStation Five. It's um, it's just the sales are there at least in the U.S. Sales are through the roof. I mean, literally, I'm, I I heard a truck driver tell me the other day that he spent eighteen hundred dollars for one for Christmas. Yeah, he he couldn't get one, and that's what he had to come out of pocket with to, you know, make sure his child had one. I'm not hearing of any other. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, the switches went really during uh, the pandemic. I'd heard where switches got, you know, you couldn't find them, and people were in the early part of the price. But I, I want to think the most I heard of one of them was like 500 bucks, which is don't get me wrong, is a lot for a switch. I mean, and I'm a fan of a switch myself, but you know, uh, but the uh, you know, graphics wise, I think the PS5 and the and the new Xbox, they're um they're neck and neck. And there's just a lot, you get a lot more out of the PS5 than you do the Xbox to me. Uh, and I'm which I'm a I'm a PlayStation purist. I mean, I, I've been with them since they dropped the ninety five and you know, sad to say that could have been the next evolution of the Nintendo if you watch console wars. Um or not Nintendo, I apologize, Sega. Oh, maybe if you watch console, but uh, hey, I'm glad it didn't happen because now we have the PS5 instead of the Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I have both systems now. Uh, we did get a PS5 for Christmas in this household, uh, and we already had the Xbox from last year, but uh, I supported the PS5 for this as much as I like the Xbox, and I actually play it a little bit more other than you know recently just because this is brand new, but uh. The, the exclusives that PS5 has, especially for a comic fan like myself, when you have Spider-Man and you're going to have Logan on there next year and you're going to have another Spider-Man game coming forward. I have two of them now. I'm, my son's playing one of them at the moment over in the other room, but I, I can't not support them when they're getting those exclusives and Xbox is just getting what everybody that, else that also That Logan gets. and Spider-Man game alone, those two games would sell me on the system right there. Cause, you know, the Logan looks great, and we've only got a few steals, and it looks great. But you're going to have a Tony Todd voiced King uh, Venom. I apologize. The Candyman himself is going to be Venom. You, you can't go wrong there. No, and, and I and like I said, this is the first time I've played. But we have both Spider-Man games, and, and I started playing, and it's you know I'm still playing the first one at this point. But it's amazing on there just to sit there and play that. And I was like, for this alone, it was worth buying the system. The only problem is I got to decide on the next few games about which one do I want to buy and I got to try and even them out so I don't play one more than the other (laughs) since I paid for both of them. So does that move us along to the next category of uh, comic books? Yes, sir. 
And Big Rob, I think you've got the next award, sir. Yeah, it looks like uh, the next uh, category is going to be uh, the comic book series overall. Our uh, nominees on this one, uh, let's see. First up, we have uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Power Rangers, which is two books that are running concurrently, um, but it's kind of all one one uh, nominee. Um, Amazing Spider-Man and uh, Star Wars The High Republic. Um, and the winner on that one is going to be the two Power Ranger books, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Power Rangers. And uh, Monster, I think you were saying that you don't, necessarily have to read both books but they the storylines kind of intertwine and and they keep them running together is that something is that similar is that yeah. correct yeah when, when they do their crossover just like the old spider-man and x x books you know when they get their, their crossover point which they're in right now with their eltar war you, you kind of have to get both of them to get all the parts of the story but up to that they it's uh, separate parts of the same story building together so you don't have to read both but you can um and to be honest, to me, that's the most nostalgia. You know, '90s nostalgia is big for for us, you know, as well as '80s. But that's the biggest book out there right now that reminds me of what I read in comic books as a kid. It's like it's, it's that same type of storytelling. Um, a lot of Marvel and DC books at the point, to be perfectly honest, are either really good or really bad. But there's nothing just fantastic that I say this is the first thing I've got to read when it gets here. But that Power Rangers titles, both of those are the first two books I read. Honestly, every time I get a, a ship, and I get monthly shipments of books, so I don't get them every week. But as soon as they're here, that's the first two things I'm reading every month. Yeah, I've, I've been out of the loop a little bit. Uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling for work and whatnot, so I've kind of fell by the wayside of my reading. I'm just now jumping back on board. Like I said, I've been going to the zone, and uh, Kevin's been hooking me back up with Amazing Spider-Man, and I've bought some trades here and there. And, and the that Power Rangers title, it is one that... I keep going to and looking I'm like this looks really, really interesting, but I've only got like some issues here or there. So I'm, I'm in need of encapsulating, you know, I'd like to start at Shattered Grid and move to what we got current, but uh, I guess quite pricey. And, and uh, you know, especially if you try to buy an individual, because some of those issues they have variant covers and some really nice ones. The artwork is great. So, you know, your boy's trying to, find some trades here or there and we're hoping for you know freebies from uh loved ones or uh, ollies one of the two so <laughs> and i think that's another telling story for them too though is that their trades unlike you know marvel and dc can pump so many out and they, they always going on sale with some of their stuff you're not finding the the, the no. boom studio stuff on sale i mean they are a small publisher that's that's part of it but also their power ranger books sell out when they get them well, i think they sell them well enough they don't have to you know do a you know, mass sale to a Ollie's or, you know, a, a place of this nature. Yeah. Yeah. And I think our other two nominees, you know, we're both of the mind of, you know, Star Wars and High Republic still kind of new. So um, it's been really good, but it's not a full year in yet. I mean, I think they're getting closer on like issue 10 or 11. So it's, it's been getting better and better. But uh, Amazing Spider Man kind of had an up and down year. Like part of the year was kind of just okay and then the last half of the year here has been fantastic with what they've been doing there with the kids they have the and, wants to sell them but what is september and october yeah but i mean as a portion i mean anybody can do us well, i'm not gonna say anybody most great titles can do a spike for right a few months. yeah and it's, it's still been a good book so I, i'm curious to see how they play out in the next year i'm Going into next year, Spider-Man stays where it's at. That would probably be, be my supported vote next year, but we'll see how they continue to, to progress. Now that I'm reading, I, I shall know and I shall have a better weekend. So. <laughs> but with that, I think that takes us to our next uh, comic book category, which is Publisher of the Year. So in this category, instead of looking at just a series title, we're looking at the entire publication and publishing line. Uh, but our nominees are Boom Studios, DC Comics, IDW Comics, and Marvel Comics. And the winner for this category we chose as Marvel Comics. Um, at least, for, yeah, at least for me, the Marvel has been Marvel has always been more grounded in reality, but they are putting out more consistent titles that are at least good to decent to read or or great, you know. But they have they have more in that category of this mid level to higher tier, whereas you know DC for me has been mostly lower tier books. They have more inconsistent hits. Um, and then Boom, yes, has Power Rangers, but that's you know, that's two titles, Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. And after that, it's kind of nothing else there. And 
IDW, I know, does a lot of stuff with the Transformers, G.I. Joe, and all, but again, it's not enough to, their entire publication line does not draw you in the same way as a Marvel or a DC. So it kind of usually comes down to one of those two. As a huge anyway. publisher, you have to have more than one, you know, one trick ponies. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Marvel and DC both do, but Marvel has had more, more consistently good titles. Um, matter of fact, I just read today the first issue of the Devil's Reign miniseries they're doing. That's a contender for miniseries of the year or, or even comic title of the year. It's only a six issue series, but man, it was fantastic. Whereas okay. I have nothing memorable from DC at the moment. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's the biggest thing right there. There's there's nothing that's just very memorable that's come out of D.C. in quite some time, honestly. Uh, I think they really hoped the Doomsday Clock, you know, what was that two years ago, was going to do it, you know, introducing the Watchmen into actual continuity. But that's the thing. They've muddled their continuity so much over the course of the last probably 10 years to where it's so convoluted and you don't know – What's what? What's the else world? And then they'll actually just in the middle of their own universe drop a title that, you know, may go for 12 to 24 issues and be completely out of the realm of continuity. It's not presented as an else world. It's not like, okay, this is on world yeah. 17. They don't, they don't present it that way. They present it like it's in their regular universe. But nothing lines up with anything else, you know, and it has like ramifications that should ripple throughout other books and Marvel just does a much better deal of kind of you know why you're not always going to you know if you read Avengers or something know what's going on in Venom but if something major happens yeah you might get a little cliff note here or there I mean Marvel's just better at that yeah well you brought up a great point you're talking about the uh Doomsday Clock Doomsday Clock but that story was so drug out and so convoluted. By the time it was over, the way they reintroduced the Legion of Superheroes Justice Society to the DC proper timeline, they'd already they'd already retold that story in a different way in a book like six months before that one even ended. That, that was a sad thing. I went on Amazon and I found that the trade paperback of that, and I was excited. I mean, this thing is this thick. I mean, it's Watchmen thick. Yeah. And it's, just, it's got great art because I love the guy that does that, the art for that uh, title because his Superman looks, is a Christopher Reeve clone. I love it. Uh, I loved when he was on the Superman title. And so I was uh, pretty excited. And then you start reading things online to where they muddled it up time they done like this was supposed to fix things. And then they muddled it right back up with, you know, Flash having Dr. Manhattan's powers and then he's off killing people and like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was complete. They've been completely impossible to follow for the most part. And and they have a bad habit right now. And I won't get into because this is part of probably another award later of their current writing conditions are, are, I'll just say right now, are not the best. They're lazy at best. Yeah. So, Rob, I don't know if you've been had a chance. Or, I know you travel for work as well, so I don't know if you've had a chance to read anything or want to weigh in on any of this part. But No, I, I, I love hearing you guys talk about that with such passion, but I, I honestly, I, I haven't read a book in forever. And, uh, and so I, I just, I have no idea. I, I'm definitely going to bow to your guys' vast knowledge. We're pulling, your, knowledge you're, we're pulling your nerd card. I'm just going to tell you now. This is starting to get pulled. <laughs> you, you place it with all your holographic Marvel cards from the nineties and I'm going to come out and collect them tomorrow on the way home from work. You're not getting my holograms. Those, <laughs> those things, they'll be in, they'll be in the casket with me when I die. So what we're going to do mine. Is, you know, they're mine. <laughs> we're we're going to help him get it back. We're just going to stop at Ollie's and buy him a bunch of graphics to send it to him. So here, just read these trade paperbacks and graphics <laughs> while you travel for work. There you go. There I, you go, Rob. Well, yeah. that being said, we're going to move on to the next uh, category, which is collectibles. And starting off, we're going to go with action figures. So for action figure of the year, Marvel Legends Fantastic Four Retro Series, G.I. Joe Classified Barbecue, Thundercats Ultimate Slide, and Star Wars The Black Series Boba Fett from Return of the Jedi. And with that being said, the winner is Boba Fett from Return of the Jedi. The man has his own show now, and that is just an amazing figure, hands down. The Black Series has done some really great work. 
got a lot of their figures um but uh, this was kind of a tough one we, we kind of went back and forth and this is definitely where big rob helped us because you know we were we were kind of torn in some way you know because they're just so much detail in some of these figures that were really nice and those retro cards are beautiful you know and, and bring such a nostalgia barbecue looks great i'm a huge fan of slife i think that you know, six or seven done a great job with that but this Boba Fett is amazing. My face is literally on my wall right now. I'm staring at him. Um, yeah, he's just a beautiful figure. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys and let's give you guys thoughts. Well, well, Big Rob, I know you had a, you had a good opinion on the, uh, the Boba Fett because I think you're a huge Star Wars collector as well. So why don't you jump on onto that one first and then I'll, I'll throw my two cents in afterwards. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm I, I'm like Hassel. I, I'll, all I have to do is turn just a little bit, and he's sitting right there on my shelf too. Um, and it's just a beautiful figure. I mean, the paint details are amazing. The flames from his jetpack and his rocket just look really cool. I mean, it, it's just so much stuff packed in there. It, it is a deluxe figure. It's a bigger package, you know, but it, it was so pretty. Um, it, it probably poses well, but I'll never open mine, so I don't know. I'm MOC. MOC, baby. Um, but you know, I mean, the, the legends, fantastic four figures were really, really cool looking. Barbecue was cool looking. Um, super seven always does a good job. I did not see the Thundercats one, but I know they always do a great job, but man, that Boba Fett was just, I was super, super happy to find, uh, one of those, uh, out in the wild last year or two of them since I picked up hassles too. Um, it's just a really awesome looking figure to me. Yeah. It, I, I voted for it, even though um, my my heart said to vote for the Fantastic Four retro card wave because those are those that was my version of Fantastic Four, and I, honestly, that was my number two team behind X Men when I was you know when they were in those costumes when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, I but even with those, and I have two of each one of one on card and one loose and in, in a display. And um, but when you look at those, you can see areas where they still as good as they look. There's still paint splashes. There's still some issues. Some of the articulation is not as good as it could be. It's, it's very fixed in and you look at the detail the very that, few flaws that they have with the marvel legend series uh you get those inconsistency and in paint in some areas yeah. well then that's when i get them i have to look at them real close especially if i have like those where i got two to open one to open and one to keep close i'm like all right which one is the more noticeable one i'll, I'll keep that one in the package that looks better and then i can pose the other one where it might cover up any flaws but I got to tell you, when looking at that Boba Fett, and I, I've almost purchased them several times, and the only reason I haven't is because I've had other pre-orders out there. I was like, I got to stop before I before I go broke. But I've looked at them several times, and I can't find any flaws on most of them that I have looked at. I mean, I've seen a couple, but not many. And I, and I find them pretty regularly, especially with uh, some of the toy stores here. Toy stores here in my area, you, you can easily go in and find some of them, but you don't find many of those with flaws. So it was hard to say I did not get. Let me ask you this, monster. There's a Collector, you know, all of us were, were doomed to do the one MOC and one loose. Yeah, especially if it's a figure with blood. If it's an expensive figure, it's a rare. I mean, no, gosh, yeah, you, uh, yeah. very few times you do it. But when it comes down to that, say you got your, your two uh, human torches here. The one with the more immaculate body has no zero card damage. It's wonderful pristine however the one with the card damage has the flaw in the paint which do you open that's easy you open the one with the card damage <laughs> and suffer through the <laughs> paint well, I, I, I can i can pose them in a way to cover up that paint flaw most of the time like for, for instance you you brought a human torch and i've got two of the johnny storm where you know where he's flaming on to be the torch and actually, his belt on the one that I opened has actually got a couple of spots where it's like the paint didn't go to the right spot. It's, it's kind of like almost looks like they sprayed it and there's little white dots around it. But you can't tell it from the way I posed him because I've got him running and his, he's hunched over a little bit. So he's running to flame on. So you don't see it. And, the other and one, anyone that doubts this, Monster is the master opposing his action figures. I mean, if, oh, yeah. if, if you don't believe us, go to his Instagram page. It is a showcase. You, you, you'll just scroll for quite some time and just be amazed. This man, my hat is off to him. He's like, I'll throw mine on a shelf. I try to pose them. They look terrible. I will get a DS award just for trying to pose these things. 
to where this man right here got four excel years just for posability. I, I I can't take that much credit, but I I would tell you I've got some that are bad. Like uh, my 25th anniversary GI Joes, they just don't stand well enough, so they all standing there in the A frame out there waiting on the school bus to pick them up in the morning. <laughs> But anyone that can get posability, I'm going to try my best, especially if, like I said, if it's got a flaw, that's the that's the best way to cover it up. And, you know, you keep the one that's got the best card on card because not only does it look nice, but if you ever got to consider reselling them or selling any of it or you just, you know, need the space. And I've done this before. I've sold some of them before. They go for a much better price when they're when they're mint on card and that card is pristine. There you go. I think, but with that, let's uh, we'll jump into our next uh, collectible category here, and I think Big Rob, you're doing this one. Yeah, the the new category is uh, non-action figure collectibles, and uh, how so? That was a scary question. I I don't know. Are you are going to be the the soul killer? Because that was a little bit of a terrifying question. <laughs> um, I'm practicing, to, you know, for my run is uh, writing the next Halloween movie. So uh, I was like, you know what? Well, let's dive straight in here. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the nominees for non action figure collectibles uh, is the Marvel Legends Iron Spider helmet, uh, the Star Wars Black Series uh, Force FX uh, Leia Organa's lightsaber, and the Robosun. I think I'm saying that wrong, but the Robosun Optimus Prime, and uh, that was the 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 fully automated Optimus Prime transforms everything on its own and uh, of course the winner is going to be the optimus prime that moves on its own because uh you know i i can't afford that i want one i'd love to have one i can't afford that but oh my god haven't we always like i think hassel said haven't we always wanted our optimus prime to transform on his own yeah that's like your childhood come true to be able to have a damn app on your phone Press a button, your Optimus Prime not only can, you know, transform, but roll out. I mean, that in himself, and he has Peter Cullen's voice, so many different catchphrases he does, moving, I mean, Monster, didn't you say he would sing happy birthday to you? Yeah, if you tell him it's your birthday, I'll sing happy birthday, and actually, I didn't know this until I watched a, another review today, because it was on someone's top 10 list of the year, and uh, the actual, the headlights and the taillights of the thing actually light up when he's driving. Yeah, I've noticed oh, wow. that. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and we've blurred a little bit of a line there. Is that an action figure or some other type of collectible? But I think with all the electronics and everything in it, you kind of have to assume that that's, for, for me at least, that's a little bit less of an action figure and more of a bigger that was a light showcase board. piece. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this it's amazing, man. I mean, the, the thing we'll sing Happy Birthday to you, you can tell it to, to transform stuff, it'll stop and do a, an Iron Man superhero pose and stuff where it's punching the ground. I mean, it's just, there's so much to it. It's amazing. There's like a, I want to say there's either 60 or 80 commands to the thing where it can do different stuff just by talking to it. I'm like, that's, to me, that takes the cake on any kind of non-collectible or non-action figure clip. It's like, the amount of stuff it can do alone. And how could you not want that as a kid? And well, the company up has Jay and Silent Bob doing the pitch to sell these things. You know, an opening day, I mean, that in itself, you know, is a legit product. Yeah, and I think they've actually, and surprisingly enough at this price, they've actually sold out two different waves. They're on the third wave of order or, or just finishing them for for trying to put more out there because it's, it's harder to make them because it's harder to get the microchips and everything else right now because of shipping issues. But they, they've already sent out two different waves of them, sold them twice, and now they're on a third round of that. And I'm like, I really want one, but I just can't. I can't break down for that price. But what what is the price, Monster? Is it, is it six or seven hundred? I believe it was six ninety nine ninety nine. Do do we get the the Ultra Magnus variant at a discount? I mean, if we're uh, getting bootleg prime, I feel like I need to get this at four hundred dollars. <laughs> Maybe someday. I haven't seen it yet, but uh But I want Robert Stack's fucking voice. I do want that. But I want him to say unsolved mysteries at the end. You just want him to stand there and say, Open, damn it, open. <laughs> put him in front you of your front. Put him in front there of the front door. <laughs> oh, damn it. I, I might get the one that's like one ninety nine that you can get from Wish dot com. That that would be the one that I would get. I the one like with the generic one truck body. That's yeah, the one that would be in your uh, Pornhub movie of the year. <laughs> uh, we, we, as we were talking about that, let's uh, move to our next category, which is collectible line of the year. The nominees for this one are Marvel Legends, 
Star Wars Black Series, Thundercast Ultimates, with a disclaimer that we know there were not many Thundercast Ultimates that arrived this year as they were supposed to, but the ones that have were fantastic. And uh, AEW Wrestling. Our winner for this category ends up being Marvel Legends. I think for me, I, I, I went with them because it, you got to look at the amount of stuff they were still able to get to your hands and the stuff that they have done. Yeah, they, they continue to improve upon their own processes and the way their stuff looks. I, again, you still get some flaws with some of the paint and stuff, but you don't get near as much as you used to. The posability is there. It, they're affordable prices for them. I mean, yes, they've gone up this year, but what hasn't? But yeah, they, they just kind of fit the bill on every, they check every box on, on my list for the most part. Uh, and they give you some obscure characters because who would have thought we were going to get a sleepwalker in any yeah. generation? <laughs> but they probably uh, hit the shelf. And it hit the shelf regularly. It's not like you would get some here, get some there. I mean, they put a good bit of product out this year, and they put out exclusives, and they were exclusives that are achievable versus some toy lines that, you know, we, we get these really great exclusives, and, you know, two states in the entire United States have access to them, you know, or, or like a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive that, you know, only the people that con you know, have access to. I mean, they've done a good job of spreading the product around. They, you know, jumped into various niches and categories so that pretty much all the Marvel fans could, you know, at least have a figure here or there they would want to buy. I mean, they didn't just stick in like one group and stay there. They spread out pretty good. Um, so, I mean, for me, that was kind of a no-brainer. I mean, I was a I love the Thundercats way. They're just very inconsistent. The Black Series, yeah. great, beautiful work. And the AEW figures are really, really, really amazing. And their collector value are actually starting to take a, a skyrocket. Uh, Rob, you were telling me some, some prices on some of those, and they were, you know, I, I was surprised, especially on their Chase figures. But, you know, the Marvel Legends. Yeah, they're, they're safe. yeah the, the AEW ones are, are kind of a – they're hard to get no matter what you're looking for, unless you need Scorpio Sky or Frankie Kazarian because they're everywhere. But everybody else is hard to come across. And the ones that you can find that are chased are, are ungodly expensive right now. The handful of Kenya Omegas I've seen have always had a damaged card. I haven't seen a, a undamaged Kenya Omega yet. Yeah, actually, I've sent you pictures of a couple of different ones from some of my travels to see if you need it, and you're like, ah, the card's beat up. Yeah. And they were like, through the ringer beat up. It's not like, you know... A little here or there where you're just being picky. No, these son of a guys are like a dog to chew them up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think with that, we can move to our next uh, category, which we're going to talk about best in class of the year. And these might be things that have uh, nominees from multiple platforms in them. And Hassel, you're going to kick us off with this, and if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I got athlete of the year. I mean, this kind of goes in a broad spectrum, like, you know, like we tend to do. But we start out with WWE champion Roman Reigns, the Braves' own Eddie Rosario, UFC women's bantamweight champion Juliana Pena. And the winner is Eddie Rosario. We have to chop on on this one right here. As uh, Pena, God bless her, she beat uh, Amanda Nunez, and I never would have thought that, but. Eddie Rosario just had so many great moments throughout the uh, National League Championship Series and the uh, World Series that, you know, he just was clutch, such a vital player. And he's one of those free agent uh, acquisitions that, you know, the Braves picked up through a free agency. And he, he was a key pivotal player. I mean, I, one of the most probably pivotal players in the entire league this year. Yeah, I, I don't think I can expand on it any more than that just because I haven't watched a whole lot of sports this year to be perfectly honest um but from what i saw i mean you know th there were several braves named off that you know contributed very highly but I i've heard a lot about his name in the, in the last yeah, i mean you could have threw solaire in there and then always uh albies you know but and swanson i mean that there was a job peterson but he probably had the biggest moments uh for the team that were like walk-offs here or there you know just a one hell of a play in the field somewhere that you know just like holy cow how does man do that big rob did you have anything more to add to, to that category or no i not a sports guy i mean that's 
I, you know, you guys talk really passionately about uh, this guy. So I'm, I'm just going to bow to y'all on that one. <laughs> I, I, th- I think the Braves is baseball. That's how much I know. <laughs> you would be correct. This man right? lives in Georgia, folks. He, he is a Georgia guy. That's complete and total bull crap. I, I, I know all this stuff. I just don't care. I, I, I wish I did sometimes, but it just doesn't excite me like no, it does these guys. So. This team right here, you can live or die by. I'm telling you now. Uh, yeah. The the fans are awesome. I, I, I love the fans. <laughs> For assholes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like the next category we got uh, – is uh, one of my favorite categories, and I know it's one of Hassel's favorite categories, Villain oh, of the Year. And uh, the nominees uh, from uh, from Spider-Man No Way Home, The Green Goblin, uh, from Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, Gozer. That was a spoiler, G. I hadn't seen that yet. Uh, and from Masters of the Universe Revelations, uh, Evil Lynn. Um, all three great villains, but by far in a way to me, the villain of the year was Green Goblin. Um, Willem Dafoe, I mean, he just nails crazy, psychotic, murderous, nutcase, rampaging, son of a gun. Uh, I think one of you guys, when we were talking earlier, said something about the, the lack of his mask. I'll be honest, I was kind of glad when he took the mask off because you get to see his insane facial expressions. And to me, that just helped the character so much. Um, to to convey the insanity in his <laughs> the the gleam of nutcase in his eyes to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a telling so, thing for his character too as, as a villain. Is while Norman Osborn might have been somewhat have some redeeming qualities, or you know, there's something in the end that you can help. He was Green Goblin for pretty much all of that movie. And there was nothing redeeming. He was a straight up villain. There was no redeem. There was no. Yeah. He's doing this for his people, like Magneto or something. He was just evil. <laughs> he's like, I'm yeah. doing this for me. Screw the rest of y'all. Well, I mean, he was purely driven by revenge. I mean, and even when he's masquerading as Norman and looks like a sniveling little wimp or whatever, it's Green Goblin, you know, controlling. He's puppet master. Exactly. I mean, this is the first time I feel like we have got a true. Marvel Universe 616 Green Goblin on the screen. He hit all the notes. He, he checked the boxes. I mean, he, he's a genius, but at the same time, he's just insane. And you never know what he's going to do. And like Rob said, he has zero redeeming qualities. I mean, he if he's got to shank you in the damn back, he's going to. And he does. So, I mean, he, he, uh, you know, there, there's nothing redeemable about this guy. I mean, and he makes you believe that, you know, uh, a true hero could overstep the bounds. I mean, he is, without a doubt, Marvel's Joker. Because, you know, Joker skates that line several times, you know, in the books anyways, where he gets Batman on the edge of wanting to break his one rule and kill, yeah. which is something, kids, we don't do in the actual Batman universe versus these damn movies where, you know, they don't mind killing the shit out of people, but still. Um, <laughs> th- this Green Goblin made you think, wow, is he going to do it? Yeah, and I, I think you, you said it was, this was the first time you felt like you got a true Green Goblin. I say it's the first time you got a true Marvel Comics villain. Um, yeah. Because he most of your Marvel comics are, are grounded in reality. There's some redeeming quality. There's some reason they're doing with it. Even when, even if you go back and watch Thor, they tried to make Hela be, uh, um, she's doing it for, for, for a certain reason because of how she was treated. Right. You almost so, want to feel sorry for her. Sometimes a great villain uh, it, it is someone that you can relate to and say, well, from their point of view, they're the hero. Yeah. Like a Dr. Doom. I mean, Dr. Doom doesn't believe he's doing anything, you know, just out of right. pure evil. He's doing what is in the, best interest of love area you know and a lot of your villains do that goblin however no no it is just it's, chaos and you should have some villains that are just basically like that but i i don't feel like even even watching carnage uh and, and venom too he still had a reason why he was doing it goblin was just like i'm doing it because i want to and yeah. I'm hey to, to quote a dc movie some men just want to watch the world burn 
And since uh, Big Rob got to do his and Hassel's favorite of villain of the year, I'm going to do my favorite of hero of the year because I'm all about the heroes most of the time anyway. But uh, our nominees for this category, we've got Spider-Man, which this is the Tobey Maguire version of Spider-Man. We also have Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in, in the running. Prince Adam from Masters of the Universe Revelations. And Superman from earlier in this year in Action Comics. Uh, we chose the winner as Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from, from No Way Home. Uh, for me, yeah, I looked at several of these, especially like, you know, Prince Adam was, it was more about Adam than it was He-Man, and he was showing that he's a true hero himself, Superman, the same sort of thing. But for me, it came down between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire for this, because both of those had a fantastic turn, had some some kind of thing to end their story off, and something that made them, made you see that they are the true heroes, you know, as Spider-Man. And Andrew got his, but... Yeah, Toby was just a step above him because he f- fulfilled a mentor role for Peter as a, uh, as well as he, you know, he did the most heroic thing you could probably do. He stopped his other self from killing his biggest enemy, right? Yeah. It's his enemy, but he kept you from killing him because everybody deserves a, t- a second chance. And I was like, man, that's, you know, youth, youth pastor Peter, you know, he's in there for the win. <laughs> he stole it from you, you rascal. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he he stepped into the uh, the Uncle Ben role, so to speak, because you never get an Uncle Ben role in, in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We get hot, sexy May, and you know Green Goblin. You know he murders May, which is another reason why he was doing another year, obviously. But you know, and so this drives Peter to the point to where he's he's ready to kill. I mean, I mean, if someone were to kill our mother, we would be hard pressed to be talked out of this and i I, I challenge you to try and do that to some of ours (laughs) especially yours she's a little firecracker but uh she looked great you know know, youth pastor peter you know he he steps in there and he he keeps you know tom holland from from overstepping that boundary and and not only does he do this he gets through to him and it's like okay you're like hey everybody gets a chance he reiterates what May does, you know, and when he hits you with the great power, it comes great responsibility line. You feel it, you know, and it's like, oh shit. You know, he's at the age now where you get that feeling like it is kind yeah. of coming from Uncle Ben. And even takes one for the team, gets stabbed in the back, you know, and still, hey, stay the course. Stay the course. I mean, Andrew Garfield gave us a great moment, you know, by redeeming his story, you know, by saving MJ. You know, in the way that, you know, Gwen got got. And like you said with Adam, I mean, Adam has the power of a god at his hands. Because, I mean, they, they finally pretty well go into it of this, like, He-Man had so much power that he didn't even use. He just used just enough to smack Skeletor around, make him his girl, and send him about his merry way and laugh off into the distance. But he had the power of the cosmos in his hands. But, you know, yeah, and, and- uh, McGuire just denailed it. And something I wanted to touch on on that Prince Adam one that you brought up, you know, he, uh, in that series, when he passes away and they show him and in, in what's considered their heaven, right? Um, everybody who's there is, is in their most powerful or heroic form, and he's in there as Prince Adam, not as He-Man. They all chose you, their You've got He-Man. all the rest. They all They're chose not. except for him. It's like, well, that's, that's kind of a telling story. He realizes it's not just about having the power, but how you use it. Yeah. At the end of the day, he's Adam. He's not... He didn't have the power to become him. Yeah. So, Big Rob, what was your uh, opinion on these? Because I know you were part of the voting process as well, and I think we all went for Toby at the end of it. But uh... Yeah, I, same way. I, um, you know, Prince Adam, um, like you said, he was the hero. And I, I'm pretty sure he told Skeletor near the end, you know, he says it's not in getting the power, it's being able to let the power go. And he didn't. Yeah. He didn't let the power go to his head. He stayed he was Adam 90% of the time and he man the 10% of the time when he needed to beat somebody's ass, you know, so that that's, that's pretty heroic. Uh, and, um, you know, goth Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield, you know, he was really, really great. He got to save MJ. He throws some quips around. Um, but, uh, but yeah, old man, uh, youth pastor, Spider-Man, he's old. He's got a bad back. I'm old. I got a bad back. Totally relatable. It's totally relatable. That's I feel I feel close to him now, way closer than I used to. So, no, Toby was awesome, man. He he was uh, 
he's still great in the uh, film. I mean, he, you know, he kicked off Spider-Man with the X-Men movies that kicked off comic book movies, not the Marvel cinematic yeah. universe, all but, it, but that kicked off the golden age of comic movies. And, uh, this just proves that they were right to cast him all those years ago. Cause he knows what he's doing. Well, yeah. that is pretty well shows you can make a comic book movie that doesn't have to be campy or cheesy or, uh, you know, appeal to a niche. They actually put a story into it. Sam Raimi and that cast done a beautiful job of, and for a long time, Spider-Man, that Spider-Man two held my top, you know. Yeah. My, kind of yeah. Love. It's it really my top I, watched it, I, I felt I was watching the panels unfold. So, no, 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 nothing negative I can say about that other than Spider-Man 3. Well, Hassel, you got the next category for us, sir. With that, we're going into surprise of the year. The nominees are Kingpin showing up in Hawkeye. Kang being the villain and Loki. The dreaded Lord Zed making his return to the Power Rangers. And the WWE releases half its roster. And with that being said, the winner is the Kingpin. That to me was, you know, you, you get certain inklings of things, you know, as you watch shows, you kind of like, mm, I think they're going this way. I really didn't, I was kind of like, oh shit, this was out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting. I mean, I was happy to have see it happen because, you know, then it kind of cements that the Netflix shows are canon. I'm hoping at some point we get a, a feeler out there to the Punisher show because that was really great as well. But, you know, between, you know, Daredevil being the Spider-Man, now Kingpin has showed up in... Hawkeye, and he actually shows up much truer to his comic form, even over his Daredevil appearance, because he's taking arrows to the chest and limping around, you know, afterwards. He shows that he has that level of power and that, you know, commands respect that the Kingpin of Crime would have. Yeah. And he was extremely badass. That was awesome. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you're good. Uh, I think it was a. For me, I chose that one too, just because that was the biggest surprise. Like, you know, at one point we had in, the, in our list, you know, Daredevil showing up in Spider Man, but then it's like, well, it leaked so much, it was kind of hard to keep that under wraps and be a surprise. Kingpin being in Hawkeye just completely took me aside. Like, I did not expect him to be the villain in this. I expected the mom to be evil the way that was going, but I did not expect Kingpin to be the person she was reporting to and working with. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I kind of thought that the Swords Man was going to show up, but my guy have a bigger. You know, villainous. Me too. Coup, coup at the end, honestly. I thought that's what it was building to. You knew the mom was going to turn bad because, I mean, she she was a good guy, good good guy or good gal in Conjuring. So she has to, you know, balance the scales there, so to speak. Uh, well, th there was no, there was nothing written into that story that made you think she was going to end up being on no. the right side. Um, but I, I assumed it was going to be Swordsman or, or some of his other family that she was working with. But Kingpin showing up just completely floored me. And actually, I've read a couple of things recently in the last week that uh, that was not the original villain or ending for the show. They changed that as soon as they realized we're going to bring Charlie Cox back as Daredevil. Let's get Vincent D'Onofrio back as Kingpin because the original villain was not supposed to be Kingpin. It was going to be someone else. I, I don't remember who it was. It was someone that's And he said he's that. very open to being in any movie show they want to do. He wants to battle Spider-Man. He wants to be another, and, I, and I'm all for that because I love the actor himself. He's oh, yeah. great. He does a great job at this. We finally have a real kingpin. They kept it under wraps. Like with Daredevil, you heard rumors. They debunked them, but you still hear rumors. It's kind of like Andrew Garfield. It's like, is he or isn't he? Is he or isn't he? It, it was at a point where just stop asking me because I can't tell you anyway if I am or not. <laughs> So even though we went into Spider-Man, you know, listening to Garfield saying, he's not here. When he did show up, you pop. Because it's a pop moment. But it's like, yeah. you know, I knew it. You know, deep in your soul, yeah. you just knew he had to be there. So and yeah, that's kind of how I didn't expect this. It, it got me. Yeah, uh, same here. And I think the surprise of Daredevil being in Spider-Man, just to bring it back up, was... Uh, 
you know, they they were able to lie their way out of that one without without telling an actual lie because everybody says that when the person slams down the case file in front of them, that's that's Charlie Cox's forearm. He's the lawyer that's there. No, he wasn't in it until much later, so he didn't really lie. But you already had an inkling eh, he's going to show up. That being said, we're going to move on to the DS Awards of the year. And as I said earlier, the DS Awards are our worst in class because they are. Rob, do you want to say it? They the drizzling shits. Kick us off, Rob. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first uh, DS award is going to be uh, for the mistake of the year. And nominations on this one. Uh, first one is the firing of Gina Carano from The Mandalorian and from Disney. Uh, second nomination is not having an actual six Spider-Man enemy in No Way Home, not having that actual Sinister Six. Uh, third nomination is the Black Series uh, Rancor has lab promotion tiers. And the fourth nomination, uh, the, we really didn't have any He-Man and Skeletor action in the first half of Masters of the Universe Revelations. And with all of that, the winner, what we think was just the crap of the year, the mistake of the year, was the Black Series Rancor promotional tiers. And uh, I, I'm going to say this one really... This one hurt me more than anything because when they showed that Rancor the first time, I was hyped. I was super excited. I was scrambling around trying to come up with 400 bucks so I could buy this big ass monster. I wanted this thing. And then they started dropping the promotion, the, the tears. And the first one was the Gamorian guard. And I'm like, all right, well, that's cool. That kind of ties in. You know, the Rancor gets to eat pig face. You know, oh, okay, cool. It's a nice little card back. I, I don't care about the old school card backs. I like the boxes, but I don't care. That's cool. And then we went to the second one. And it was a pile of plastic bones. Okay. And I just do not understand this. If you're going to put some plastic bones in there, just put them in there. Otherwise, I can go down to the to the hobby lobby and buy a, a thing of plastic bones for three ninety nine if I want to make a diorama. And then tiers three and four, because they weren't getting the sales, obviously, they went ahead and released them. And what we got? Salicious Crumb and a Luke Skywalker. I love some Luke Skywalker. I love Jedi Luke Skywalker. But I already had this one. All you've done was I think G said it was the was this were these pinless or not? Yeah, that's that's the only difference. This is a new mold, but it's just a new body mold they're using in general, and they just slapped the tunic on it and painted it in black. I'm literally looking at one exactly. on my wall right now that's just as suitable. Just as suitable. Exactly. Yeah. So you you put me three characters that I already own and some plastic bones, and you think that those are good promotional tiers. It's not. It wasn't stickers, but it was still terrible. And and I'll be honest, as far as the others go, the no he man and Skeletor, I think that got that got fixed in the second half yeah. of Revelation. Because He Man and Skeletor both was really awesome in the second but half. Did they of, push of away some fans that may not have come back for the second half to get redeemed? I think it may have pushed a couple of fans off, but honestly, if if they would have handled that Everybody in the world, I think, today is just so quick to get butt hurt about stuff, including me. I got upset about it too. So I'm not not gonna not include myself in this. But it, it we're good with it. And I could give you a whole show on this. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep this thought as brief as I can. Everybody just needs to take a deep breath, calm down, and let us see how it works out. Sometimes there's a reason. And like I say, I, I'm as guilty as anybody, so I'm not throwing stones. Believe me, I'm not. But uh, but yeah, sometimes we just need to just just to hang on just a minute. Let them let them do what they're going to do. Maybe it's a better surprise like this. I mean, this was a great surprise. He man was freaking awesome. Hulk he man the and season was amazing. Yeah. I will say that it was. It was really really great. So you know, that's one of those things. Um, you know, it, it not having the, the the Sinister Six, not having the Six Villain, that really, it was bad. And, and you're right, there's a chance we may never have this, but it's a money printing machine. There are going to be more Spider-Man movies. There's going to be more Venom movies. It, 
I, I have faith that we can get that. So it, it was a minor sadness, but I, I'm not going to freak too much. Um, the firing of Gina Carano, that one, again, I could give you two or three hours on that one. So I won't other than to say I'm in love with Gina Carano. If she ever happens to watch this, I love you and I'll do anything. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Nice at least three times. <laughs> Please. Yeah. So, but that, that was, that was for me. And, you know, I thought of another name for the, the DS awards is, uh, these are the companies that will never, ever sponsor the show awards. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. That is fair. Uh, hey. So we may, have, we may have lost Hasbro already. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I'll piggyback off some of the stuff you were talking about big Rob, but you know, uh, Gina Carano thing was very political. It, it sucked because it ruined the next show, the Rangers of new Republic, which I was interested in, but you know, beyond that, it got a little too political for me. So I, I kind of bow out of it. Um, uh, the uh, He-Man stuff, you know, to answer your question, Hassel, I think word of mouth, even if it, even if people left, word of mouth of what happened in it from those who did stick around, anybody who's a fan, they're going to come back and watch it anyway. And, and not having a sixth member of the Sinister Six is kind of a, the way that movie was done, that was a minor problem. Um, for me, the HasLab thing, yeah, it was terrible, especially in, in Big Rob, I don't think you touched on this, but the Salacious Crumb figure, that's the exact same figure, and I think the same package that it was released in yeah. earlier this year that you could order, it was coming out probably, about the right. same yeah. time. That, that, that was, was a major house. black eye for Hasbro right there. Yeah, but, yeah. What you, but what you did miss, though, Rob, is you missed the true hero of that part of the story of Jedi. Not only was there bones, but the rock that Luke throws at the door was actually in that pack of bones and rocks. So you missed that was the true hero. Skull. That was a game changer. Let's go back and re-fund re, re this Was it skull? Either way, it, yeah, it was the skull. And matter of fact, in the Legends continuity, the the skull had a whole backstory and stuff. So, but yeah, it, yeah, that that's true. I did leave that out, and I apologize. <laughs> it's still not worth buying, but hey, I just thought I'd throw the true hero of the story in there. Yeah, I think you guys <laughs> have pretty well nailed it down for me. Uh, I mean, anybody that really wants to know our thoughts and you know on this right here. We done an entire episode on this. Go to our YouTube channel and uh, feel free to click it because we went in depth on this right here. I was more saddened at the fact that I had to go put about four boxes of Kleenex and two jars of Jergens on Big Rob's porch because I knew this man was in dire need of some some comfort during this time. So you know, I, I tried to. You know, as a good friend, you know, help as best as possible without letting it on true hands. So, uh, you know, but uh, uh, go, go check our other episode out there. We go in depth. Uh, you guys nailed everything on the head for me. Yeah, and, and, you know, since you brought up needing to be comforted, that takes us directly into our next award, which was uh, our next Drizzling Shifts Award, the frustration of the year. What were the things that made the year just really tough and, and hard to deal with from a nerdy standpoint? Uh Nominees are pre-order shipping schedule delays, Marvel Legends teams threatening fans over Galactus Heralds. If you don't buy this, you won't get them for two years or more. Uh, Sentinel, Marvel Legends Sentinel knee issues. Uh, you know, you pay five hundred dollars for a figure, four hundred, whatever it was, and it shows up and it can't even stand up straight. And then uh, for those of you who do transform specifically, I know Hassel, you've got a couple of these, and I have some. But trying to transform a God blessed X Transbots third party transformer. It's the hardest damn thing I've ever done. I think that's the only toy I've ever thrown across the room. But the winner for this category was the, uh, we, we all had to come to a conclusion that it's the pre-order shipping schedule delays. I think everybody's felt the pain of that, whether it's the fact that you didn't get what you wanted this year and you, you've still got money sitting out there or you're being charged by the ghost of Target, <laughs> Target Christmas past. <laughs> oh, my bitch. They hit me three times a day. <laughs> uh, they got me too. Or, or you know, you got stuff that you weren't expecting and your budget was like, Ooh, that wasn't supposed to come until next year. Why is that here all of a sudden? Go wire and spider helmet. Yeah, or or I'm gonna throw a special one in here for Big Rob on this is you expect your holiday figures to arrive in time for the freaking holiday. They don't show up until yeah. the next holiday. But but they're coming with a e an Easter bunny helmet that is interchangeable for when it shows up at Easter, Rob. It's gonna totally be fine. Yeah, hopefully so. You got a spare bag to the side, so you have to open fucking both of them. But hey, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know any collector though that did not have some frustration over the pre-order shipping schedule, whether it was 
I got shit early and I got charged for it and I wasn't budgeted for it yet or I, I didn't get what I wanted or whatever it is. I, I know it hit me both ways. Like I, my I'm more frustrated and, with Target myself over the constant on, off, on, off, on, off. It drives me insane. I'd almost rather just pay for this shit up front and be done with it. That that is a pain. I, I've I've learned to live with that one because it's never going away if you order anything from them. And they keep doing exclusives there, so it's not going away for me anytime soon. Yeah, me either. So with that, I assume we move on to the uh the worst in class of the year. The ultimate not, drizzling shit. The ultimate. I mean, this is this the is expl- this is the explosive power. diarrhea. This one right here is Green Goblin shits. You 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 took some uh some antibiotics before this. So with that being said, the nominees are woke character changes slash lack of character development, Marvel's X-Men Endless Resurrections, Super 7 shipping schedule, true winner and the one we are the loser the most of is the woke character changes slash lack character development. The change for the sake of change, the Let's make a statement and sell one month's worth of issues and then no one comes back next month. Changing a character's continuity over the last 20 years just to, you know, do whatever. It's just piss poor plan, you know, and and DC is far worse at this than anyone else. I won't say that Marvel's, you know, got their hands clean because their white gloves have some spots as well. But DC Comics does seem to be the one with completely black gloves at this point. I mean, they just, they, they're just throwing shit at the wall at this point and hope, praying something sticks and nothing sticking and it's just all sliding down. They're pushing true fans further and further away. Yeah, I, I you know, you brought the DC point and not even necessarily all the woke changes necessarily sometimes because I'm not a fan of, if it's a newer character or it's a character that makes sense to gender swap or to race swap or whatever, I'm fine with it if you if you got a sensible story. Most of them have not been, but the biggest thing to me is if you look at it, they're doing exactly what they did in the 1990s, which did not work, you know, and made everybody go up in arms and, and until they brought all their classic characters back in the 2000s, but they're trying to deconstruct every character, take away what makes them special so they can tell you what makes them special. Fool, I have read these people for 40 years at this point. I know what makes them special. You ain't got to break them down and, and change that for me. Just figure out how to write yeah. within the confines of what you're handed. If it's, you can't do it's that, it's almost proven at this point that we can write them better than they can because they can't write for shit. Uh, apparently, DC does not do creative summits anymore. And Marvel, they're only going for three days now instead of five. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's a sad day for collectors at this point. You know, in the 90s, we, we broke Batman's back, gave us a new Batman. We, we, we killed off Superman, gave us four different Superman. We we took how Jordan out, killed him, gave us Kyle Rayner, which wasn't necessarily a bad one. Uh, we took Aquaman's hand and gave him a hook for a hand. We took a Wonder Woman and took her powers away and made her just a fighter and gave her powers to an, another Amazonian. Why can't we just tell the story with the characters with the powers and sets and the, the lives that they've had for many years? Why can't we continue to tell stories with them? You know, we live our lives. We don't go back and get to start over and reboot this. So why do they? Yeah. And, and that's, that's and number all, Those are interesting chapters for a few of those characters. Because there was a few of those I was a fan of, uh, or at least certain aspects of them, so to speak. But you can continue these. These characters have been around for 75, 80 years for a reason. They have yeah. a, fan, a loyal fan base that loves them. We don't want to see Batman fucking broke. Everyone knowing Batman's Bruce Wayne, and he's a fucking homeless dud now that's just barely getting by. Yeah. No one wants to give this shit about that. No one wants Alfred fucking dead. You know, yes, we want consequences in comics, and that's where Marvel is muddling the line with the X-Men, which is why they were, uh, you know, a nominee for this, because there's no consequences. When when you can fucking die and be resurrected in the same issue, I mean, I, I can tell you right now, I don't mind throwing these old hands here, but, you know, a bullet comes out, your boy hiding. <laughs> your boy ain't getting out there with a bullet coming at him. But you tell him, say, look here, Hassan, dog, you can go dive head first and just get blowed back of your skull out. We'll bring you back tomorrow and you'll be better than ever. 
your boy will be a brave son of a bitch. Yeah. So, I mean, it just makes, you know, Jubilee should be the baddest X-Men at this point because, hell, you can just bring her a little weak-ass back next week. I mean, yeah, it, there's it's, no consequences. It all comes down to what we said earlier. It's lazy writing. We can't yeah. figure out what to do with these people or what they've done in the past, so we're just going to start over and tell our story and we're just taking away everything so we can tell a story we want to instead of working within the confines of it. I, I challenge these people that, that work for um, DC and Marvel, you know, instead of writing for them, they need to go, they need to go spend like two years writing for Power Rangers where they got to take Japanese stories and footage and figure out how to work a story for, in America in there in about 10 minutes of that show and the other 10 minutes be Japanese action and see if they can figure out how to learn how to write within the confines of a story. That would be a true challenge. I mean, you look at what they've done and how they had to cut those shows together. Those people are far better writers than anything Marvel and DC have right now, to be honest. Oh, but with that, uh, that brings us to our... Normally, this is the nerd out segment of our show where we ask each other questions and stuff, but we're doing this format a little bit differently today for the award. So instead of our nerd out questions as normal, we're going to actually talk about... We all got the same one question. And we're going to kind of go through it. We're going to talk about what were our top three picks for announcements of things that are coming out in the, in the coming year of 2022, whether that's a movie, whether that's a toy line, whether a certain uh, comic series coming out or something in the wrestling world is coming. What are the top three things you're looking forward to the most? And since Big Rob is our guest, we'll put him on the spot and let him go first because we're mean like that. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, so, you know, I, I sat there and then thought about this one. And um, I, I guess the first one uh, that I'm going to pick, and uh, we don't really have a whole lot of time that we got to wait on this one, is Morbius. Um, I was not a huge yeah. Morbius fan, but uh, but every time I see a trailer for it, it looks more and more interesting. So I'm I'm pretty pumped about seeing Morbius. Um, I do have I, the first the, appearance of Morbius signed by Stan Lee and graded, just for those that are wondering. Nice. And to the point, I'm not actually even sure other Superman superhero movies come out this year, but but I am looking forward to Morbius. Um, kind of a, a cheat one, but Book of Boba Fett. I know we got one episode yesterday, um, but the rest of them is not coming out till 2022, so I'm counting it. And I am super, super pumped about Book of Boba Fett. Um, and let, and me pause, third, let me pause you right yeah. there. Just a second, Rob, since uh, you brought that up and – uh, I don't think we ever talked about that in here, but we try to hit on stuff that happened within the year for these awards. But if something falls within the last week or so, or the week that we're recording this, like Boba Fett occurred yesterday for us, um, and we're recording today, so we were already setting what we had, that cannot be co- counted for this year. So that is countable for next year for anything we do for awards and stuff. We, we consider that next year because one episode was not enough to, to make a break, but I can tell you because I've watched it, it would have made this list most likely if it continues on in the way it did. Oh yeah, it, it would have been an Excelsior, not a DS. It it was great. Um, my my third uh, thing that I'm looking forward to, um, I'm going to stay within the realm of Star Wars, but I'm going to toys. Um, Cobb Vanth is getting a figure, and if you remember, he is the guy that had Boba Fett's armor, played by Timothy Oliphant. I am a massive, massive Timothy Oliphant fan. And this is the first action figure I've ever seen of him. If you have never seen Justified, that is one of the greatest shows I have ever seen. It's got action. It's got humor. It's got badassery. He plays a U.S. Marshal, and he is just, he's the baddest motherfucker I have ever seen with a badge and a gun. I won't say I thought it was better at Jupiter Rising, but hey. He he, he, who, he what? He wasn't in Jupiter Rising. Yes, he was. He was the, uh, the, the old guy that looked like Kingdom Come Superman. Good I thought that was Josh Dumel. That was Josh Dumel. Son of a bitch, it was. Yeah, that's Josh Dumel. <laughs> you know yeah. what? You people just got something that's a rarity. Me being mistaken. Not wrong, mistaken. But yeah, yeah, you're correct. Hey, I, I was supposed to own it. I, I was, I'm, so, I'm glad Monster agreed with me because I was thinking, that's too male. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to own it. I'll be honest with you. You scared me. It was. Um, <laughs> I almost did a mind trick, y'all. He was. Uh, he was the uh, <laughs> uh, Santa Clarita Diet. He was in it and uh, several other things. Anyway, hey, he I, was, uh, I got way too much. 
He he was Hitman in the Hitman movie too. Correct. You're yeah, the first Hitman movie. Uh, he was in Deadwood. If anybody watched that, um, I don't know. There's a few other things that he's been in, but anyway, he justified. He was a huge, bat, uh, pretty much a huge badass. And then uh, and then Kyle Vanth in the first couple episodes of Mandalorian, and I thought he was freaking awesome. And I'm so looking forward to that action figure. So that's my three. So what do you guys got? Awesome. Hassle. Uh, well, for me, I got a pretty, uh, pretty uh, narrow list. Uh, my first thing is in February, my fiance and I were going to a Days of the Dead con in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it'll be my first con since the Days of the Dead in 2020, February 2020 just prior to COVID really wreaking havoc and shutting the world down like a month later. It was uh, literally a few weeks later, uh, me and my cousin went to this and um, huge horror convention. Uh, it's uh, my fiance is her first uh, con ever. So I have the pleasure of taking her and letting her get a small taste of, you know, what we, we love to do at, at a con, you know, meet various, uh, performers or whatnot i mean and she's she's venturing into our wor world because she actually helped me create the ds award uh graphic last night she gave me a, a, a few nudges here or there to put it in, a, in the direction it winds up for the graphic is in i really thought you were gonna say a few nuggets so there to it <laughs> well, might as well but uh yeah so it's her first con i'm pretty pretty stoked about that right there uh, there's not a lot of big stars at the moment uh signed to it but a con to con. Hey, make sure you prepare for uh, the one thing that nobody who ever goes to their first one is prepared for, the body odor. Is it February? So I'm hoping. It's just in South Georgia. We get all four seasons in one fucking day. But I am hoping for a cold February in Atlanta. <laughs> Not snow, but you know, at least, you know, a 30 degree day out where people need jackets and then if they don't have the right guard, God bless us, we're okay. Um, so, but yeah, you are correct. I, I have been at MegaCon as well as you guys have uh, in the, what August, late May, early uh, uh, late May, somewhere in there, when the heat and humidity was through the roof and the stink was even worse. So, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, um, but my second one was a crowdfunded thing. Um, I did the crowdfunding for the Maddie Collector. New generation WWF ring. They come with Diesel, Doink, the Macho Man. Dig it! I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. That drops this year. Um, I, I think it's got a few extra, a few little extra, like some ring skirts and whatnot. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that right there. I'm, I'm excited to get it and display it, so to speak. And my final one is a surprise that I haven't even broke the news to you guys about. I literally few minutes prior to us sitting down to record tonight's episode, I went ahead and I bit the bullet and I put a non-refundable deposit down on a Super 7 Thunder Tank. I finally talked you into it. I, I went ahead and done it. I mean, I just, the, the you know, they dropped the video yesterday and I mean, it just, it looks great and you finally get a scale of I mean, this thing is, for people that don't know me, I'm a large man. You know, so when I, I do my hands like this, it's big. So, I mean, it, it looks great, and it's in scale. The figures fit in there. I mean, like, it, when it showed Lion and Panther are just sitting in the back, chilling like villains, and there's still tons of room in the cargo space, that's a son of a bitch. So I haven't, I haven't broke the news to my fiance yet that we, we're, we're buying this. Um you know, so it's going to be one of those surprise moments when it shows up at the door. Like, oh, you know, Santa came early. And in the way their shipping fucking schedule is, even though it says uh, July 2022, it may be Santa delivered. So, uh, hey, <laughs> you know, I'll be more excited if, if shipping delays aren't a part of 2022. So, well, I, I, before I get into my top three for this year, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty proud that uh, that I accomplished something this year. Because I, every time you you bring up that Thunder Tank, I send you pictures. It's still for sale on Big Bad, and you're like, "Damn it, stop it! Damn it, stop yeah. it!" Yeah, you, you finally ordered you this shit for like six months at least. I've been like, I, I, I've been staying strong, you know, like a fat kid just staring at a piece of chocolate cake, and he's he's turning, he's turning. Yeah, I, I just kind of went 
nose deep into it, like you know, <laughs> the little brother on a Christmas story uh, in the mashed potatoes. So oh. it was bad. That's pretty good. But my uh, so my top three for announcements for next year. Uh, I had to put Super Seven's Ultimate lines in here. Hopefully, they're arriving. Hopefully, we get more of them. And it's not just I put it as all the Ultimates because you know you've got GI Joe Ultimates coming out that I've ordered some of. You've got Silver Hawks. You've got the Thundercats. Um, hopefully, I get some of those in my hand, especially the Silver Hawks ones. But Silver I'm excited Hawks to see more of those come to fruition. Dave, I ha- they were actually on my third on my list until I pulled the trigger on the the Thunder Tank. <laughs> they were like right there. Uh, my other two, uh, the Marvel Legends X Men Wave that they just recently announced for it coming out. I'm super stoked about it because I I'm a huge fan of Cyclops Havoc, the Summers Clan. So you got Havoc in there. It also gives me Siren for my X Force shelf, and I've been dying to get one of those. And so that that wave just you know, and Vulcan as well for the other Summers brother. But that wave took me you know that's that's one I really was looking forward to getting next year. Um, and then my last one's kind of a surprise, but it's a uh, after getting the PS5 for Christmas, I'm looking very much forward to the exclusive Marvel games that are coming because I'm pretty sure that it's November and December that we get one of those, whether it's Logan or Spider-Man, but um, those oh. start coming out around that time and then the other's not far behind, and I am really excited to play those, especially after playing Spider-Man the last couple of days and, you know, in the evenings and stuff. It's been phenomenal to play, and I'm looking forward to that a lot. Yeah, and Insomniac Studios, they do a great job with their games. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the ones that I, and I haven't even played the Miles one yet. Like I said, my son's been playing it, but it looks fantastic, just as good. Maybe I a little bit shorter it. than the first one. It was the first game I bought my PS5, and I play well. I got that in the the Werewolf game, and uh, I, I just I kept going back to it. It was fun. It was uh, he has a better power set than what Peter has on the uh, the other game to me because he just has so much more they allow him to do between the camouflage and the Venom blast. But he doesn't seem to be as strength wise strong. So yeah, you had, you had to kind of work around it, and then you wait on recharge and so forth. But it was a very fun game. It's it's shorter than Spider Man. Um, it's probably about three quarters of what you get out of Spider Man. But it's a fun play, great game, great story. I, I enjoyed it a good bit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um. But, you know, with us sharing these, if you guys want to feel free to share what you're looking forward to and your announcements for next year, you know, just like with the awards, if you want to expand on that or share more, please feel free to do that in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Um, and I, and I kind of guess it's close to closing out the show here. But before we close out, we want to remind everybody, check out our sponsor, The Zone Collectibles, for all your nerdy needs. Whether you need toys, comics, whatever, you can find them on the interwebs at these own collectibles at gmail.com on Facebook at the zone collectibles and at their store in Tifton, Georgia, and be on the lookout in the coming year for, uh, for giveaways and special events coming from our sponsors. that will be announced throughout the years we get to them. And before we leave off our sponsor hassle, they actually uh, provided you with a gift. They wanted you to unbox on air for, for this. Show. Kev did. Uh, and yours is in the mail. Uh, I'll unbox and- on the show on the next one after it arrives. It's just, I'm further away. So it takes longer to get here. Yeah, it takes a little while to get cross country. Uh, but but like uh, Monster said, uh, Zone Collector was awesome, people. Kev wanted us to unbox this live on here. And, you know, as much of a surprise as this is for me and you guys, uh, we also, like he said, we're going to have some upcoming giveaways that the Zone is sponsoring. And they'll tie into our shows. We haven't decided exactly how we're going to do the giveaways yet, but. Just stay tuned, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. These type things will probably be how we uh, determine our winners or so forth and so on. I'm going to get into this right here. Uh, I can't say this would have been essential back in the day on a Saturday morning. Previously on the Nerdy Man Room Show, Hassel struggles to open simple Christmas gift wrapping. And he was correct. This would have been the ultimate way to eat your cereal while watching your Saturday morning cartoons. You got your cereal on one side, your milk on the other. No soggy cereal. That's pretty legit right there. I've got to give uh, give him credit. That is probably the most thoughtful Saturday morning gift I have seen yet. Let's see if we can get it out of the box here. 
Yeah, that does look pretty interesting. I would uh, actually. I could oh, it's good, that it's good now. size too. It's got a little little hand on a little side there, so you can kind of get at your boy there. And I, I'm gonna dig in that right there. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. Eight year old me would have loved this. He would have loved to have been able to have this as he sat down and watched his Saturday morning cartoons that back in the day, in our days, thankfully, would last for hours. Dude, 40 so, year old me would still I, like that. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I, I got to be honest. I went by and I, Kevin got me one too. <laughs> so love you, Kevin. It, it's going to be packed in my suitcase for going on the road. I'm taking this one with me, I'll be using it. Oh so. yeah, it, it looks perfect. Not just for cereal. It looks like you could put multiple things in there too. I, I, I am excited to see that show up. Yeah, I'll be lucky if my my daughters don't steal this from me. You know, so I got a feeling they're going to kind of take that away from me. <laughs> and with that, that brings us to a close today. But before we leave, I want to thank again Big Rob for coming back and joining us again, especially after two weeks in a row. He said it was so so nice. He had to do it twice. Couldn't stand to be away. Uh, we do appreciate you coming. You're a, a huge friend of the show and a part of our extended family right along with Kevin there at the Zone Collectibles. And we want to make sure that you guys know how to find us as well. So Hassel, share with them our uh, Twitter handle again. Maybe I won't watch it this time. Let's go with at NerdyMRShow. Reach out on us. So we're very active on there. And if you anything you have a comment on the show that you don't want to drop here, drop it to us there and we'll, we'll get back with you. And remember, if you enjoyed this video or any of our other content, please give us a like, subscribe, comment, or share. It always helps us out. Join us here next time. We're going to be reviewing the coming nerdy items for 2022. Until then, live nerdy and enjoy your new year.